Welcome everyone to uh, today's video and today we are going to learn how you can um, count uh, your the FPS of your OpenGL application. Um, so uh, and after that I'm also going to show you how you can use the GLUT library to limit the frame rate to a certain uh, limit so it will not go above that. Um, so just uh, I'll show you my little project here. So this is just a simple rotating cube uh, in which uh, I am using the idle function to post the redisplay and um, a float value to which increases the angle uh, of rotation. So we'll determine the FPS of this application. So uh, we are going to calculate the FPS so it is pretty ob uh, obvious that we are we're going to work with time so we need the time header file um, and we'll also print out some stuff in the console um, I'll print out the FPS in the console but if you want to show it in your uh, in your window in the game screen uh, so you can do that by rendering text but uh, I'm not going to cover that part here actually so uh, to output it, uh, it into the console uh, we will need the iostream file iostream header um, and so the next thing will be declaring some variables which will be used to calculate the FPS so all of them will be integers so uh, uh, they will be the initial time final time and the frame count uh, okay so uh, when the application starts we want to initialize the initial time so when as soon as this vari uh, vari uh, variable is declared we'll uh, assign the value of current time to it so the function time returns the number of seconds passed since 31st January uh, 1970 if I'm not wrong uh, okay so uh, the number of seconds in integer form will be stored in the initial time and the frame count will initially be zero and then uh, the the display callback of the GLUT library is where the frame is being rendered um, if you're not using this uh, display callback I, if you're not using GLUT library, uh, you need to find out where actually the buffers are swept or where the frame rendering is finished. So here in GLUT, this function, uh, when this function is called, a new frame is displayed. So that means uh, if we know how many times this function is being called in a certain time, that will be the frame rate. Um, so we can calculate our uh, do our FPS logic after we have swapped the buffers. Um, so I'll start with increasing the frame count. That um, because uh, this function is called, that means the frame has been displayed, so we can increase the frame count. And then the next thing will be final time, the time which uh, the current time when the frame this frame is being displayed here. So we'll use the time function for this too. So this will return the seconds. Now we can check if the there is any difference between initial time and final time. If the difference is one or great, uh, greater than uh, that, that means uh, a second or more has been passed. So this will be uh, final time minus initial time. If this is greater than or equal to 1 that means 1 second has been passed or we can just do uh, greater than 0 because this is an integer value the initial and final time so this will mean pretty uh, much the same thing so if this is greater greater than 0 that means a second or more has been passed and we can now calculate our frame rate so I have written down the stuff here um, the frames drawn in a certain time is equal to FPS so frames drawn over time taken in seconds will be frames per second so we'll use this simple formula to calculate the FPS in our application so um, 
will print out the FPS to the console. So the FPS will be uh, the frame count divided by the time that has been passed, passed since we started counting the frames. So that will be final time minus initial time. Um, so this will be our FPS. So since we have calculated the FPS, we can now reset the values. So we'll first reset the frame count to zero because we'll start counting the frame from zero again for the next time when we are going to uh, calculate the FPS because uh, so you can just judge by this that the FPS will be updated um, every time a second or more has been passed. Um, so the frame count reset and we also need to reset the initial time so initial time will be the time at which the fps has been last time calculated because we are resetting the frame uh, frame count so the initial time will be equal to final time when the frame rate was calculated the initial time will be equal to that time and then uh, the process will start again the frame count will start from zero the final time when there is a difference between these two the frame rate will be calculated again so basically the frame rate will be calculated once every second if the fps is greater than one or if the fps is uh, lesser than one then um, the timing may differ but uh, this is not uh, actually possible in the mod uh, just leave it um, so we use this formula to calculate the fps and let's just check how much fps we are getting So I am currently recording here so uh, the FPS is not quite good uh, because of the uh, screen recorder. So approximately I have 50 FPS. And now let's talk about limiting the FPS. So let's try limiting it to 30. So let's first declare define a constant 30. So 30 FPS right now. So now uh, we'll use the GLUT library to uh, limit the FPS to a certain value. So uh, at this time I am posting the redisplay, uh, redisplay from um, the idle function. So I'll change it to timer function. So you need to know about the timer function now. So the timer function triggers a certain callback which has been passed into it um, with a value actually uh, but we'll not use that now. Um, so it triggers the callback after a certain amount of time specified in milliseconds so if you want to call the callback after one second so we will pass in a thousand milliseconds because uh, this is equal to one second and then when we want to call the idle function and then a value to be passed into the function because the uh, callback that we register here should take an integer argument so we'll just uh, change this function we're going to use the same function that we used for the idle callback we'll just change its definition uh, although we'll not declare any variables here because the value that is being passed into it will not use that uh, use that so we'll not declare any new variables this time a function uh, the idle function will be the callback which to be triggered after this amount of time and the value to be passed will keep it zero because we are actually not accepting that value into any variable here. So uh, if we want the frame rate equal to this value, we want we will divide this by the FPS value. So the timer function will be called after this much time. So this will result in the this FPS. So uh, 1000 milliseconds divided by 30 will give you 30 FPS. Um, so the next thing you know need to know that the timer function is only called once. So you register this callback, the idle function is called and it's over, it will not be called again. This is not a kind of loop, it only gets called 
once so if we want uh, to it to be called again and again be, because we want to post the redisplay after this amount of time we need to def, uh, register the callback again so once the idle callback is called from this place the timer function it will be triggered after this amount of time and then when it is being triggered uh, first the redisplay will be posted and this will be registered again so this will be called again after this amount of time so this will create a continuous loop of this function being called and the redisplay re being post, uh, posted after exactly this amount of time. So this will result in a certain limit of FPS which we have specified here. Um, so now let's just compile a program and check if this is working. So there we go. Um, although the FPS disrupts while I uh, move the window because some frames are not being rendered, but um, it is approximately equal to 30 frames per second. Now we can try limiting this to different values. Like let's try 15 FPS. There we go, 15 FPS. Um, So as I said, um, the, uh, you can try printing the FPS onto your game screen um, by rendering text onto that, but I'm not going to cover that here right now. So this was all for this video. Um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more stuff.